I don't know if you guys can see, but out there, right outside the fence line, we have deer just munching. How cool. I don't know if you can see them, but there's one right there, two over here. Look at that sunrise coming up. So pretty. I'm headed out to check on the sheep to see if we have any progress, maybe babies. Let's see what we have. Still no babies. If you follow us on Instagram, you know that I have been predicting that these two ewes would have babies like two weeks ago. And here's the reason why. If you look, especially her, she is so wide. She is really wide too. And I know they have like inches of wool, but you can still see that their bellies are really wide. And her especially, her udders are huge. Um, these are East Frisian, so they are a dairy breed of sheep. So I'm expecting their udders to be quite large. However, I remember when my milk came in <laughs> and how painful that was. So I feel so bad. I just want this poor girl to get some relief. Like you can see these things are just massive. So I've never had a strictly dairy breed animal. I'm not used to that. I've always had just Nigerian dwarfs. And now I have these Nubians. They're going to get bred come fall. Um, but I've never experienced udders of that magnitude. <laughs> But no babies as of yet. Let's go inside, grab some coffee, and chat about things going on here on the farm. Just poured myself a hot cup of coffee. I've been up since five because I had to start baking. Today is bread pickup day, and I have one that already <clears throat> went out with Andrew because he's delivering it with a starter. And then I have eight more to go. So early mornings are what I love. I love waking up when the sun comes up. I love being up by myself um, to kind of get everything done and feel like I've accomplished a lot before it turns into mom time. Um, today we have a very busy day because not only are we balancing bread pickups, micro bakery stuff. We also have farm stuff that needs to get done. So today we are going to be going to the feed store. I'll take you guys with me so you can see what we get. Um, we're gonna go to a local co-op. So um, if you have one in your area, I do suggest trying to get all of your feed there. Tractor Supply is a great resource, but you can also support, support locally by going to a local feed store or co-op. So I'll head out there in a little bit after I finished all of my bread so that they can cool. So we're going to have a busy day ahead of us. I hope you guys hang out with me and uh, I'll show you all the things. One thing that I want to cover really quick is if you are local to the Erie area, I am going to be having an in-person sourdough workshop. I am currently working on nailing down a location and a date. So that is in the works. If you're interested in that, please go to the description in this video and subscribe to our newsletter that is on our website. I'll put everything in the description, but please sign up for that because that's where I'm going to give all of the information for when that stuff is available. I'll also put uh, my bakery link in the description. On the bakery link, you can also order a starter and some fun merchandise, but everything will be in the description. Let's continue baking and then we'll head to the feed store. After baking these last couple weeks, I have really found joy in just a plain loaf that I get to have fun scoring. I love the inclusions, but to be honest, it gets really messy and I don't get to do any pretty scoring or anything like that, which is what I really like to do. So when I cook a plain loaf, I kind of go all out making sure that it looks beautiful because that is the artistry that I love about making the bread. Don't get me wrong, I love a good pepperoni and cheese, but there's just something about being able to score a loaf 
and know that it's going to turn out looking like a piece of art at the end is just something that I think is very special about sourdough. My customers typically love the inclusions. They're not really so concerned about having a beautiful loaf of scored bread, if I'm being honest, but I still like it and I hope people keep ordering it. Everything is out of the oven. I have it cooling. I am going to actually have to run to the store because I need to get more bread flour. I just realized that Easter <laughs> orders are due in like a couple days. So I need to get my Easter orders done. I need to start that tonight. So I am going to head to the store, grab a bunch of flour, come home, feed my starter because I don't even have enough flour to feed my starter. And then we'll go to the feed store. So plans have changed just a smidge. Headed to good old Walmart to pick up bread flour because it's the closest to our house. Um, and then I have to go the complete opposite way to go to the feed store. So we're just kind of running all over today, which is fine. I only have one kiddo. My son is at my parents and he had to sleep over there and they're just playing games. So my parents are gonna drop him off later, but this is how we have to do things. I know a lot of times I get questions like, how do you do it all? And I don't do it all. I have a lot of support. My in-laws and my parents are really good at helping <laughs> at helping when I need it. And then I work off hours. So I'm um, doing my bread first thing in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. And then I am doing my bread at, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night. Getting feed, huh, monkey? <laughs> Grabbed all the feed that we need. I had a bag and a half of our sheep and goat feed already at home that I bought extra last time. So I only had to grab five 100 pound bags of the egg mash. Um, they make it here, so it's cheaper than if you were to go to Tractor Supply. Plus you can get 100 pound bags and then we just have these big metal like drums, I guess you would call them, that we put it in. Perfect for putting our feet in. So that's what we do, that's how we store it. Just got home and in between <laughs> going to Walmart and going to get the feed, I popped back home and fed my starter. My house is an absolute disaster because I was doing bread this morning and literally just dishes everywhere. So don't mind it, but this is, my starter, I fed it probably at half hour, 45 minutes ago. It was down to here and it's already bubbly and active. So in another hour or so, I'll be able to use it and we can start the Easter orders. As I'm here working on my loaves, I got notification that a retail store is interested in selling my sourdough, which is super exciting. So there's a few loops that I have to jump through to be able to do that. However, they wanna see some samples tomorrow which means I need to start some loaves ASAP to fulfill all my Easter orders and then this new, hopefully, retail partner. So I still don't feel comfortable yet starting my loaf. Here's my starter. You can tell it's really active, but it's not where I want it yet. Um, I would like it to be up to here at least before I get started with it. So we're gonna give it a couple more hours and then hopefully by three, four o'clock, I'll be able to start it, but it's looking really good. Some things that are happening on the farm that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and we kind of got carried away, which is how my days go. One, waiting on those lambs. I am going to start milking my sheep two weeks after they birth. Um, now this depends on what their udders look like. I'm gonna make adjustments as I go. If they each have one lamb and um, their udders are looking really full, then I'm just gonna share with the lambs that I'm gonna milk and let them feed. And we'll see how it goes. A lot of people I've talked to said that's how they do it. They typically, if they have two or three lambs, then they'll wait two weeks before they start milking just because they want that lamb to be able to get all that colostrum. They want the lamb and mom to bond and then they'll start pulling her for milking. Um, Again, I'm not sure how this works. This is my first year milking sheep. 
and uh, I've only milked goats in the past, so we will see how this goes. So that is the first thing. The second thing that I wanted to update you guys on is my plant sale. I, a few videos back, I talked about doing a plant sale. I still plan on doing that. However, um, I really need to get my butt into gear on getting these plants ready. Hoping, I keep saying this, but I'm hoping tomorrow or even tonight, I can start a bunch of them that I can really just start kicking out these plants because I know people are gonna wanna start to buy them in the next couple weeks. So that's my plan is to have a lot of my stuff put into soil by the end of this weekend. Back out to the barn. I usually go out first thing in the morning, go out again around like 12, and then again at like 4.35 o'clock, and then once before bed. Um, we're just checking to make sure that the sheep have not lambed or have lambed, just to make sure that we have everything covered if they start and we need to assist. But right now when I go out in the afternoon, it is my time to collect eggs. My girls typically keep laying all throughout the morning. As you can see, they're all outside now foraging and eating all the bugs, but I like to come in and just collect eggs at this time. No updates <laughs> as far as the sheep go. I did collect some eggs. Tomorrow is egg delivery day, so I take them to a local store and they are selling about 12 dozen a week. So that's what I've been taking them. I think right now in the refrigerator, I have 17 or 18 dozen. So honestly, this is just for us because I start a new batch every week for them so that they have the best and fresh eggs at their store. Any eggs that are discolored or maybe look a little funky, I don't put them in there. I keep them for us even though they're perfectly fine. It's just, they like to have the prettiest ones. <laughs> and I get it. Let's get back to sourdough. As you can see, my starter has become very active. You can see the bubbles all over the top and it is ready to use. In one of my last videos, I talked about how I have not been measuring and I am just going by feel and sight on my sourdough. This is something that you can do over time. I don't suggest right off the bat <laughs> doing it. You have to be able to make your loaves for a while before you get to that point. But I know what it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to feel like, and that's easier than trying to measure sometimes. So what I do first is I just put warm water and then my starter. I make sure that's mixed really well. And then I'm going to add in my flour. As you can see, I'm kind of just dumping and then I'm going to mix it. And then I'll keep doing that over and over. So I will dump a bunch of flour, mix it in, see what consistency I have, dump a bunch of flour, mix it in, see what consistency, so on and so forth. And as you can see, it's starting to get nice and thick. This is the consistency that I go for. I tend to go a little more dry than wet with my dough and it works out perfectly fine for me. I'm going to go ahead and cover that and let it sit for a half an hour before I have to add in my salt and then I'm going to go ahead and feed my starter. Right now I'm feeding my starter two cups of water, four cups of flour. I just need to keep it bulked up so that I can complete all of these orders that I have coming up for Easter. It's really important that when you feed your starter that you scrape down the sides of your vessel so that all of the starter gets mixed in. I just did my last coil fold. This is just a stain on here. It's clean. <laughs> but um, I just did my last coil fold and you can see the dough is already proofing it looks great on that one and then this one is the one I started earlier today it's actually pretty good I think I'm going to turn it out in the fridge to cold proof now and then I can bake it first thing in the morning these I'm also going to bake first thing in the morning I have a lot of orders that I need to start tonight so the sooner this proofs the sooner I can get these in and then I can use this tub again
for all the rest. It is nine o'clock at night and I just got the kiddos into bed. It is time to start working that dough that I have been letting sit all day. It is pretty well proofed, I would say. <laughs> it is definitely ready to go. So we are gonna go ahead and make all of our inclusions right now. And then I'm gonna fill this tub back up um, do stretch and folds, all that stuff tonight, and then that's going to sit overnight, um, and then I can cold proof them tomorrow all day, and then bake them tomorrow night so that they're ready first thing Saturday for the Easter pickups. So that is the plan. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this tub. Let's check out this dough dump. I've been seeing that phrase all over Instagram, and it cracks me up because it is so satisfying, even as a baker who has done it over and over there's nothing better than dumping the dough onto your counter and seeing how fluffy and beautiful it is so something I just started doing which I don't know why I should have started a long time ago is measuring out each loaf I noticed my loaves were pretty inconsistent and um, that's not good you want your customers to get the same size loaf every time so what i did after this was actually put a bowl on my scale <laughs> so that it wasn't just like falling all over the place however my loaves are typically around two pounds so as long as i'm right around that mark i feel good about it and then i just start making my inclusions i used to try and separate my loaf into what i thought was equal parts and then i would just start making my inclusions, but I didn't think that was working. So this is the new way I'm doing it, and it seems to be much, much better. My loaves are a lot more consistent now that I'm weighing them. Some things to keep in mind when you're doing your inclusions is you want to make sure that you're getting all of your ingredients mixed throughout the dough. So I like to do the burrito fold when I'm doing my pepperoni and cheese inclusion because then I can ensure that pepperoni and cheese are going to be in pretty much any bite that the customer takes. You want them to cut open that bread and see the pepperoni in the middle. You want them, you don't just want it on the outside. You know what I mean? So we're, we're going to go ahead and fold this up into the bread to make sure that they are getting a good amount of ingredients in every slice. Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing your inclusions is to make sure that you are really getting a lot of tension in the top of your bread. This is going to help with that spring in the oven. And now I'm going to be shaping an everything loaf. I make these a little bit different. This, I just pull the dough as if I'm going to be making myself a plain loaf. And then I'm going to spray the top with water and put my everything seasoning right on top. It is really important that you spray it with water before you put the seasoning on or you will not have any seasoning on the top of your bread. <laughs> I've tried to just make it stick on there without water and that does not work. Another tip if you're making an everything loaf of bread or any sort of seasoning that's on top of your bread is you want to lightly flour your banneton, very lightly. You don't want the dough to have a ton of flour on the top of it because that takes away from those beautiful seasonings that you want to see on the top of your bread. Once I get my dough into the banneton, I do pull it again to get more tension on the top of the dough. Feel free to play around with shaping your dough. There's so many different ways to do it, but I'm getting pretty tired. I'm going to put this one in the fridge and then I'll pick you guys back up in the morning. <laughs> I'm back in the kitchen. I have a lot of orders for Easter that I have early pickups scheduled for. Um, like I said earlier, I got a very exciting <laughs> notification yesterday regarding possibly getting my bread into a retail location. So I have some samples that I'm going to be sending today as I drop off my eggs. We will see if he likes them and what kind of thing we can figure out so that I can sell them there. But I wanted to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I know it was kind of all over the place, but that's my life here. We do a lot. Um, not only am I running this micro bakery that takes up a lot of time. One thing I do want to say about doing sourdough, if you are going to start a bakery in your house or anything like that, it is time consuming and it's a labor of love. And that is something that you need to be aware of before you start. It's not something that you're going to be able to just package and ship so if you're looking for something where people place orders and you just ship them out that's not this that's just something you kind of have to really 
assess if that's something you want to do. It's definitely, like I said, a labor of love. However, it's very rewarding when you get those messages that say like, this is amazing. My family loves it. And that just makes my heart so happy. So I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'll catch you in the next video. Hopefully we'll have lambs by then. Bye friends. Of course she's no lamb out there and not where I put all the fresh bedding. These dudes are running around playing while she's trying to have a baby. <sighs> she's laid down a few times and pushed a few times. So we're definitely getting close. I got these goofballs over here. Just messing around <laughs> while she's trying to have her baby. I'm trying to just let her do her thing and not intervene. I wish the goats would just. <laughs> They're literally playing right next to her. Poor thing. There she goes. Come on, Mama. Come on. You got it. Okay. Moral support, I guess. <laughs> Nothing yet. Alright, I'm gonna leave her be for a little bit longer. See if she can push her out or him or whatever it is. Y'all, rookie mistake. I just watched my you give birth and thought I recorded the entire thing, but I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, Baby's up, mom's cleaning it off. He keeps trying to nurse, he or she, but mom keeps moving away, so I don't know if she has another one in there. <laughs> it's like a dance. Came out to check on mama and baby. Oh, they're doing so good. Look how cute he is. <laughs> As a boy. Um, okay, so they are bred with a Clin Forest. So these are East Frisian Clin Forest cross, which is why they have the black spots, which I think is so stinking cute. He's so curious. Hi, bud. Look at that. Oh, he's so cute. They're doing great. <laughs> oh, look at you. Your ears are so cute. 
Yeah, you're so strong. Yes, you are. Yeah, you did great.